Hello everybody, welcome back to Castaway Trader YouTube channel. Today we will talk about how to count a stock from scratch, how to open a chart you've never seen before and figure out what is the trend, what are the waves we are in now and what we can expect next. So I just remind you that I have a website www.castawaytrader.com where you can find my blog and latest updates. I also post on Twitter Castaway Trader. So here is an important disclaimer, please read it carefully. Ok, let's get started. Before you count any stock, before you follow a call of any analyst, I want you to make several very simple steps. The first one, I suggest that you check how big is the company in terms of market capitalization. I would not touch any company which has a market cap less than 1 billion, because small companies are unstable, they are vulnerable, some news can hit them hard and you will lose a lot of money. So how you can check that? There is a website I personally prefer, it's called www.gurufocus.com. It's free and you can get all the information I want you to check on its one page. So let's look at that. So if you want to check market cap, you see you have it here, market cap 11 billion dollars. Today we are playing with a stock uh, Gold Corp Incorporated with the symbol GG. What's next? Next, I want you to check whether that company makes money at all. Even though we are talking about technical analysis, I want you to double check whether that company is a real business or it's just a phony name which might collect it money from investors and don't know what to do with that. So let's, let's check. So again, we are coming back to the very same page on www.gurufocus.com and here you need to check that specific section, it's called profitability and growth. You want to see that operating margin is positive, meaning that every time the company sells something, they make money on that. And you want to make sure that net margin is positive, meaning that the company still makes money after paying taxes and interest on its loans. You want to make sure that return on equity, that line, and return on assets are big enough to justify investment in the company for new investors. In that particular case, we are quite low, it's like only 4% per annum, meaning that basically that specific company is not that uh, interesting in terms of uh, financial uh, analysis. Let's move in. What's the main business of the company? Yes, you can say that basically we work with the technical analysis and charts, it's not that important, but I would strongly recommend you to understand on what horse you are making bets. Again, on that very same page, you can read that Gold Carp is a gold mining company. You can see what regions it is operating now and you can check even uh, some brief information for example here about its gold reserves. So here we see that Gold Carp is a big company with market cap of um, 11 billion dollars. It makes money and it has some assets. So now we can start talking technical analysis and harmonic Elliott waves. First question for you before you start, whether you have enough historical data. I would suggest you work only with charts where you can get a full year of data, at least full year of data, because the technical analysis is based on assumption that all the information, available information about the company is reflected in its prices. So you want to see the history of those prices, you want to see how, how company behaved, you want to check whether there are any year-long trends uh, 
can be seen on the charts. Okay, now we are coming to the main topic of that video, to the count checklist. Every time you start counting a stock, you have to check what is the highest available time frame you have, preferably monthly. Even you, even if you try to trade on five minute time frame, you really want to know what's going on on the highest available time frame. What is the main active trend right now? So let's have a first look at the chart of GG of the Gold Corp. First task for you, check main direction or trend or trends which can be identified at different periods of time in, in its history. And here basically we can see that Gold Corp had two main directions in the past. So first, since 2000, it made a great run into 2011 and from the top of 2011 2010 it declined sharply into the December of 2016. Once you identified the main direction of a trend, you want to check whether you can recognize standard five wave patterns because remember five wave patterns are about motive waves they confirm direction of a trend and just to remind you this is how that basic pattern looks like so we have one two three four and five if we have a trend up and one two three four five in a trend down this is one thing i want you to take away from that specific slide what makes possible for us to count waves is the nature of the wave 3. You see, wave 3 is elongated. So normally, wave 3 is the longest part of the motive move. So when every time you try to identify five wave pattern, so you are looking for an elongated wave 3 in between of the move, in the middle of the move. And here, how you can use those five wave patterns connected together. So this is another most basic pattern in harmonic Elliott waves. It's A, B, C. And as you can see, wave A consists of five waves, wave B down consists of three waves, and wave C consists of five waves. That's why we call waves A and waves C motive waves, because they move in the direction of the main trend and wave B, which is composed and sub or subdivided, we can say, in three subwaves, is a corrective move, corrective wave. It always moves in direction opposite to the direction of the main trend. Okay, let's come back to our chart and let's start to make our first steps. So the first very major step in your counting is to identify a starting point. And your starting point is always a very important low or very important high. And in this particular case, we would start from left to right from the first available data. And here we can easily identify a starting point for the chart. So this is somewhere here. This is the lowest low, as you can see. We have never ever touched that low years after. So the first step is to identify first fractal, most common basic pattern, A up, B down, C up. And that becomes our wave one. So once we got our wave one, so our plan is to identify wave two down, three up, wave four down, and wave five up. Our basic building block of a motive wave. Let's look what we can get here. So here, basically, we are looking for a corrective move in the wave two down, and here we can easily get it. We are here now, we need A, B, C down, and this is it, A, B up, C down. Very easy. So what we are looking for now, it's A, B, C up, A, B, and C, and that will be wave three, and again, 
we have just got the most easily identifiable part of five wave structure. You see, it's pretty shallow ABC up in wave one, pretty shallow wave two, and elongated wave up, the strongest part of the move. So basically, that pattern looks like five wave up, and as you can see, that move is one of the strongest, or maybe the strongest part of the move, and it is located in the middle of the move. This is exactly the pattern what we are looking for to identify and count it as the wave three. This is our marker of the five wave move. What should be noted here is that in under harmonic Elliott wave rules, the law of subwave B of three is a very important law. It shall never be breached by correction in wave four. So when we have tapped in wave three, and when we are looking for a corrective move in wave four, we are looking for ABC down, and what is really important, we are looking for the move, which never breach the law of the subway B of three. This is why I put that green line here. This is our very significant, important support. So we can count that move down as wave four. And this is where we are in terms of uh, the basic model. We got ABC up of one, ABC down of two, ABC up of three, and ABC down of four. So we are here now. So what at that point, we are looking for the final ABC move up, and that would be our wave five, and those five waves would comprise a larger wave A up. So coming back to the chart, we can identify wave A up, and at that point, we can move the support from that point from the law of subwave B down to the law of wave 4 down. So when we are looking for a corrective wave from that top, from the subwave A of 5, we are looking for ABC move down, and what is really important, that move down should never breach the law of wave 4. This is where you put your stop when you hold bullish position on the way up. And if it breached, so you are looking to exit your longs and probably start your shorts because it would be a very strong signal that that impulsive wave up is dead. So here we can easily identify that B down because it has several red candles. Probably you can identify ABC uh, down here on that specific time frame. But if you go deeper into lower time frame, into daily in this particular uh, example, you would easily identify a corrective nature of that move down. But uh, because we don't want to spend much time on that, we would just take it like that. So this is be down, believe me. <laughs> okay, so what we are looking now for is the final move up. And it's very important, I want you to take away one rule uh, from the chart. So every time you are looking for the final move in the wave 5, you should take into consideration that normally that first leg up in subwave A of 5 would stall somewhere close to the previous stop made in the wave 3. It may stop some, a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but it would never skyrocket from the bottom of 4. It would go up and then it would pull back. So that makes that pattern in uh, wave 5 easily identifiable. Another thing I would like to remember, I would like you to remember, is that that final wave C of 5 is normally very strong. Sometimes you see that crazy C up stretches up to 200% of the size of A. This is the point where people would short here and many of them would not be able to cover the shorts on the way down in wave 4 and on the way up they would say okay this is a standard pattern so called double top and we would add two shorts. And after a brief move down in B down we would be celebrating how wise they are 
only just to start crying when we see another move up skyrocketing like exponential move up to new highs and many of them would be stopped out when the price would make new highs this is what makes that move so strong so emotional as you can see it's almost as strong or maybe even stronger than the strongest part of the move in c of three look how similar they are because here as well people have been shorting here have been shorting here and they got stopped out on that move up and this is exactly what happened here again but in this particular case they got stopped out and the price finally has really topped this is our c and this is our five congratulations we have just identified a basic five wave pattern and this is a very important building block of any price structure because five waves move up comprise a larger wave a so now we are here so we have just made a significant part of the move up this is our motive wave a wave which moves the price in direction of the main trend at that point you start looking for a deep correction because we are talking about a completion of the wave of a larger degree you have a very small degree a b and c you have a larger degree wave one and you have even larger degree of wave a so once a larger degree completes it sets a high or a low which should not be penetrated by the by waves of a smaller degree indeed look at that so if we come back to the chart we have just made the top and the top held for months because we have started a corrective wave down and that was our b wave so let's identify a b and c this is exactly what we have on our model so a larger wave b down should consist of a b c move down and talking about stops remember i told you that your first stop was at the low of two your second stop was at the low of b of three your third stop was at the low of four and you could have set the next final stop at the low of b of five and probably somewhere here once you go to into microstructure of that move you would also identify that smaller b of five inside that wave and that would help you just to sell your longs and get short without risking much capital inside that wave but once we complete a larger degree a move of the larger degree all those stops are gone because the only stop you would have for that wave down what would be the very lowest low point the starting point of that move because the larger wave be down parenthesis be down is a corrective wave meaning that it should never retrace more than the move made by the preceding motive wave so it can come back down to the very starting point of that move up to the penny so it is acceptable that a corrective move down would retrace 100 percent of the move but not 101 it cannot go deeper than the law of that wave a so this is the stop uh, for any longs so you can try to knife catch b down if it retraces 98 percent the bullish pattern would still be valid you would still be able to expect a powerful wave c up afterwards making new highs but as long as that law is breached you're done so your bullish pattern is devastated and you have to start looking for patterns from scratch okay let's move on so we are here now we got impulsive five wave move counted as larger wave a and we got a b c down and we counted the corrective larger wave b so now we should expect another five wave move up and it should be five waves and that would comprise a larger wave c and normally that larger wave c would be at least equal in size to wave a or sometimes it can stretch sometimes it can stretch to 200 percent of size of wave a so that's why it's really important 
to find the place where wave B can bottom because it's a great place to start loan again. Okay, let's start. And basically we are going to do the very same steps we have just come through here. So we identify the very same pattern and we will see that we are going through the very same steps. So A, B, C up would be wave one. Then we are looking for a corrective move that would be wave two. And because we have just started a new wave of a larger degree. So those stops, those lows are irrelevant uh, now for us. So the most important stop for us is the low of the preceding corrective wave B. So this is our starting point now. This is the stop which you hold until wave two confirms it has bottom. So every time uh, during the period of time we are here in that move A, B, C up. So you put your stop at that low. Once we have completed wave down, so you move your stop up to the low of wave two. And this is where I just put, I draw that green line. Our critical support for the following structure. Okay, so what we are looking for now is an elongated wave three and here it can be easily identifiable. A, B and C, this is our powerful wave three up. Now we need to find a corrective move down. And this is our corrective move down. Again, remember that at that point, our critical support moves up here to the low of B. So we are looking to, for a corrective move down, but that move down should not penetrate the low of that wave B. Now we are looking for A, B, C up in the wave five. And this is our wave A. In that particular case, you see, A was unable to stretch uh, up to the point where the preceding wave three has stopped. So in this case, it managed even to make a new high, higher than the high of the wave three. But in that particular case, it was quite shallow. And it does not indicate whether the following wave C of five would be strong or weak. No. Okay, so now we are looking for a corrective move down and this is our wave B and again our old rule wave B down B of 5 should not penetrate the law of wave 4. So this is where you can move up your critical support from the law of B. Once wave 4 down completes, completes so, so you, you put, put your stop, stop here. here. You, you know, know that B down B of 5 should never breach that law. Once the law is breached, again, your bullish pattern is invalidated. You have to exit your longs and you can start looking for shorts or maybe you can actually just enter your shorts on a breakdown of that law. And here we have our most emotional part of the rally, the completion phase, acceleration phase. Again, look at that. It's a huge move up, relentless move up taking out the previous highs. It has the very same character of the most as the most emotional and uh, the most powerful part of the wave C of the wave three C of three here. So bears are punished here. They got stopped out and the new high is made. And that's a completion of another five wave up structure. So here we are. Look, we got five up of A, three down of B, and finally five up of C. We can label it as parentheses C here. And this is our wave one. Remember, so coming back to a lower degree, our basic building block ABC is always either wave one or wave three or wave five if it moves in direction of a trend. So we got a grand wave one comprised of a larger waves A parenthesis A parenthesis B parenthesis C. So at that point we are looking for a drop, a correction in wave two. So we, we are here is to speak about a basic model and normally wave two 
may be a very deep one, again it may correct 61.8, 50%, 76.4, 85.4, 90, 98% of the whole preceding move up and it can be it can be sharp and it can be scary <laughs> and this is exactly what we got here we, ha we got a very sharp drop and the problem for us is that it's very difficult for us to count that wave as a completed wave to down because as i mentioned and as i showed you on the basic model that wave down should be comprised of ABC and in harmonic Elliott waves and in, even in the classic Elliott wave theory the structure of a move probably is even more important than the depth of the move if the price drops too fast in a very simple way uh, to the target area that might not be enough that might justify a need for more complex structure when price starts to burn time just you know to cool down the bulls because the problem so the problem why we have corrections because too many people become bullish and all those people at some point of time would buy and we would be seeking for new buyers who would not come and then short sellers come and we start to short sell and this is when that obvious true uh, comes up to life so there are no more buyers and when new uh, short sellers new sellers come to the market the, the balance immediately changes and the price starts to decline and then you have those stops run by the bulls and that's why the price can move a uh, large distance very fast so here is a classic uh, pattern so when you look at that pattern you could say okay if you tell us that this is all the correction it looks pretty strange because on that leg up inside that correction the price managed to make a new high and it does not look reasonable the fact is it does we have a classical pattern the called expanded flat identified by mr elliott this is the pattern when the underlying trend is so strong that after the first corrective leg down, price retraces its upper direction and keeps moving up, making new highs over the highs made in the motive wave one. And only that it collapses down again and makes lower low than the low made by a subwave A of that move down of two. So what you see here, after we got our motive wave one we should get a corrective move structured as a b a c a down c down and b up and in that particular case under that particular pattern the expanded flat price manages to make a new high inside that uh, corrective structure and the second uh, directional leg down under that pattern is more powerful than the first one it's longer and travels bigger distance and it makes lower low than the low made in the subwave a down i just put some lines so you would see the reference of those important pivot points okay so what we also know about that pattern that wave a should consist of three subwaves it should have abc structure wave b should also have abc structure but wave c should look pretty impulsive it should have five wave structure okay so we count it as b up this is our expanded flat pattern and we count it as c down you see it made here new highs over the high of the wave parenthesis one and that long and powerful wave down was our parenthesis C wave which managed to make new laws under the laws made in parenthesis A wave and it's a very important check at that point to check whether we are right or wrong is to check the 
subwave count of that wave down. Remember, I told you that that C down should have five waves, and indeed, those five waves are easily identifiable. We can get A, B, and C of one, A, B, and C of two, and this is our standard check. We are looking for elongated wave, the most powerful wave of wave three, consisted of ABC. And in that particular case, that pattern is easily identifiable, A, B, and C. And this is, of course, our wave three. You just you just see it from the glance. And have, then we have a brief A, B, C of wave four, and our standard pattern for wave five, A, which stopped a little bit lower than the bottom of wave three, but it could not travel further without correcting in B up. This is BO5, and finally C down, but was CO5, and that those five waves comprise parentheses C, A, B, C, and this is our grand parentheses wave two. And at that point, once we completed that corrective large pattern A, B, and C, that law becomes our new critical support our new critical starting point for a new unfolding structure to the upside because at that point basically what we got we got a huge wave one up huge wave two up and we are here if to talking about a model of the harmonic Elliott waves so here we should expect a bull run in the most powerful part of the move in the grand wave three and this is when we keep watching that law that law should not be penetrated once it's penetrated once it's breached it means that we should come back to our drawing desk and we should uh, look in for maybe a new pattern or maybe we should uh, we, at least we need to find where we made a mistake this is our critical support and as i mentioned so wave three is the most powerful part of the move and the minimum requirement for wave three it should stretch at least to 176.4 percent of the preceding wave one starting from uh, that critical law uh, of wave two and that gives us a target of 97 98 i know that sounds totally crazy when we have now price in the neighborhood of 12 dollars but this is why such a high time frame as monthly really matters mm -hmm. so because you can set a target for years ahead okay thank you for watching this video if you have any traders please don't hesitate to send me your questions so you can post your questions on youtube you can send me email to castawaytrader at gmail.com I'll be happy to answer your questions and you can give me ideas what videos you would expect me to record next. I hope that would help you at least to better understand my accounts and my way of thinking. Thank you. Follow me on Twitter, Castaway Trader. Bye.